In this video, we will look at a different power index called the shapley schubert power index. To calculate this uh, index, the steps are one, <clears throat> list all sequential coalitions, which can be tricky if there's a large number of players. Two, in each sequential coalition, determine the pivotal player. We talked about that in our last video. Three, count up how many times each player is pivotal. And then four, convert these counts to fractions or decimals by dividing by the total number of sequential coalitions. So it looks very similar to the Bonzoff power index, but instead of counting the number of times somebody's critical, we're really going to focus on this pivotal piece as a different measure of power. Now, what we'll find out is sometimes those power indexes will, will give the same results. Sometimes they will give a different results, but they are a measure of power. So let's take a look at an example. In our first example, I already have a table for us, but it says consider the weighted voting system where the quota is eight. And there's our quota right there. And our players have, have voting power 762. So the first thing we'd need to do is write out all of these sequential coalitions and determine who is pivotal. So um, they would be player one, player two, player three, or player one, player three, player two, or player two, player one, player three, or we can have player two, player three, player one. Lastly, we could have player three first, player three, player one, player two, or player three, player two, player one. Now I have given a document um, that is in the previous page here on Canvas. There's a document that shows all of the sequential coalitions. This would be the one or n equals three or three players. That way you don't have to create these every time. Okay, let's find who is going to be pivotal. I'll just highlight those. So in the first one, all right, player one has a weight of seven, not enough, but player two, seven plus six is enough to make it pivotal. So player two is pivotal. The second one down, seven again, not enough, but seven plus two is nine, so player three is pivotal. In the third one, player two is six plus two, is uh, uh for, excuse me, I said that wrong. Player six, player two is six plus player one is seven. So player one is pivotal. And the next one, player two plus player three is actually enough. Player three is pivotal. And the next one, player three is two plus player one is pivotal. And then player three plus player two is pivotal. Now what you'll notice, this strange thing happens here. Even though they all have a different weight, seven, six, two, they all end up being pivotal the same number of times. And so by the shapley uh, schubert power index, they actually have the same amount of power, even with these different weights. Kind of an interesting take on it. So let's fill in the table. How many times was P1 pivotal? One, two. How many times is P2 pivotal? One, two. How many times is P3 pivotal? One, two. All right, so there's a total of six times here. So each of them have a fraction two out of six of the pivotal power, which is approximately 33% of the power. Now it's actually 33 and a third because as you can see these numbers um, add up to 99 rather than 100. So it's 33.333. Uh, so they all share equal power. Very, very interesting. Uh, as a fun exercise for you, since I don't know the answer off the top of my head, you might try, go back and try the Bonzoff power index and see if in fact they all have the same equal power under Bonzoff. Let's take a look at an example where there's four players. Now I've taken the liberty of, of copying and pasting from the document I provided on a previous page. So this one says, consider the weighted voting system where the quota right, is 51 and our players have weights 40, 30, 20, 10, find the power index. Well, this is a lot of work, right? We're going to have to highlight in each one where it changes it from being, uh, from being not winning to winning. So let's take a look at a few together, but we won't do all of these. Um, in the first one, right, P1 is 40, not enough, plus P2, 40 plus 30 is 70. That's enough, putting us at uh, more than 51, so that's pivotal. Uh, let's take a look at one a little bit further down. Let's take a look at the fourth one. Player one uh, has a weight of 40, but then we add player three, which is a weight of 20, 40 plus 20. That's enough, that's 60. So that would be pivotal player. However, take a look at one more below that. Player one is 40 plus player four is 10. That's a total of 50. Not enough. 50, we're just one short of 51. So we'd have to go to plus player two. Now we have 40 plus 
10 plus 30. We have 80, well more than enough. So in that case, player two is pivotal. So our job would be find all pivotal players uh, in this set of, of, of 24 different possible sequential coalitions. Um, when, when you do that, you have to set in for some time and be very careful as you're identifying all of those. I'm going to ask you a few questions now about some of these in particular. Okay, so uh, when we get to the bottom here, we see that our table is a little bit larger, right? We have four players this time, and we're to write in how many times each one of those are pivotal. And so we would have already filled out this entire table. We would have all of our highlighting. We would have to count all of the highlights, and then we would insert those numbers into the table here of the number of times pivotal, and lastly, to calculate the Shapley-Schubert power index. So I'm going to end the video, but I'm going to bring back this same table to you and provide a few of the numbers so that you can finish filling it out. I hope this makes sense of how to calculate the Shapley-Schubert power index.